the circumcision. We worship God in spirit. Not in the flesh. To be bringing sounds from heaven. And yet we are bringing those sounds in the gyration of demonic spirits. With our hands lifted up, I want us to just give the Lord worship. Glorious God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your presence is here. And you are doing a new thing. Lord, with our hands lifted to you, we just say, God, we are ready. Use us. For that Lord God which you have in store for this city. The Lord is looking for vessels, yielded vessels. And Lord today we present ourselves to say God we are available to you. Concerning all that that we have asked of you God. Take hold of our hearts. And make us fit for your use. That this land may know your glory. Oh Father we thank you. We thank you. As you yet bring your word to us today, thank you because you will yet speak and equip your house and your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the people of God shout a big amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a shout as we take our seats. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's great to be in your midst this evening. My name is Pastor Ifeo Kwabo, in case you don't know who I am. And this is my brother. Praise God. I really appreciate for the, you for the opportunity to come and share God's word with us today. Thank you, sir. And the leadership of the house. Mama, thank you so much. It's good to see you again after a long while. Hmm? And good to see everybody this evening. Praise God. Hallelujah. I am thankful to God for the way this meeting has begun today. Because much of the burden in my heart are the things that we just prayed about. One of the challenges that the Lord has brought to us in recent times, and we have shared this with our brethren in church from time to time, and that is that we as a church, there is a tendency to get so used to doing church that we forget to do Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's very easy to get carried away with all the fanfare that goes on with church. And we forget about our assignment, our relevance. And so the Lord began to deal with us concerning the relevant church. And we began to see a number of things from that perspective. And I realized that it's very easy to get carried away, especially with all that is going on in our city. And forget that what this land needs is Jesus. And in case you do not realize, you are the Jesus that the land is looking for. Because years ago, when I read the books of Oswald J. Smith, Wesley Duell, and many other revivalists of old, I'll never forget a statement also J. Smith made. It says, man is God's method of doing things. And while churches and structures are consistently looking for better methods, God is looking for better men. And so as we pray for revival, this is how I pray. That the Lord will found me worthy to bring revival in my land. Because in case you not realize, all that you just prayed for is really that you will take your place and begin to function as God desires. How many of us are ready for that move? And in case you do not know, that move is upon you. I trust God that tonight many of us are going to be greatly enlightened. I believe the Lord has brought me here to answer the questions of many of us. Many burdens are going to be lifted. I trust God that eyes will be opened. I will come to a better place of discernment because God is doing the work. There is a move of, this, of the Spirit upon this land. 
And I'm excited because I've been in Wari for a few years now. I spent most of my years growing up in Benin. Schooled, did everything in Benin. And when the Lord sent me here, I was really excited because I'd visited Wari from time to time. But coming here, I discerned that this is where I need to be. And over the years of walking with God, I've seen that God has great things in this land. And more especially, God has young men and women in this land that he wants to light up the fire of God in their hearts. And when I anytime I come here, I'm always excited because I see what God told me he would do happening in this place. Amen? Amen. Hmm. And so I know that God is raising men and women in this house for a great move of the Spirit. And the word that we're going to hear today is going to show us how God will have us prepare for this move. And so the topic of the short exhortation I trust God for today, the, the word that the Lord laid in my heart is prepare for more. Amen? Prepare for more. We rejoice in that which we have seen. My work with God, I have seen tremendous manifestations of God. I've seen HIV healed. It was an amazing experience. This lady came to church, she had done the test, and she was in tears because she had lived a rough life. But I saw the power of God came upon her. And she went back and did the test. And it was negative. Praise God. Mm. I've had dreams and I'll see God visit men. One I'll never forget. This man was in a terrible state. He was the, the state of the HIV. His own state was very bad. I had a dream and I saw him. And I saw what the Lord will have me do. And he came to church the next day. This man had rashes all over him. If I was in a, he had to stop work because he was dying. And the Lord visited him that day. And he went back to work. Praise God. I, I don't know if I'm getting this. Now, I'm not saying this so that you feel that, ah, Pastor, he's a man of God. Ah, he's here today. But I just want you to recognize that with all this, there is still a burden for more. Moses prayed a prayer and he said, Lord, show me your glory. I love a particular translation. It says, God, I want to see you more in your glory like I've never seen before. In other words, there's so much more in God that God is calling us into. However, our greatest challenge is that we are not prepared. And I feel a burden in my spirit to speak to us this morning about how to prepare. Because God is about to do a work. Are we following this? God is about to do a work. We got a number of prostitutes saved. My, my, I am so excited about how God has strate strategically positioned us in NRA Junction. Because you can't help but have a burden when you are in that place. Praise God. We got about five, six prostitutes saved. And these people were excited. But then we now had one challenge, man of God. Where are we now going to house them? These people are in a brothel. That's where they live. That's where they wake up every day, bait, get dressed, and prepare for the work for the day. All following this. And we came to church and we announced, how many of you, and we announced to all of you here now, how many of you are willing to make your house available? We have five ex-prostitutes. Are you following this? And they will stay in your house until we're able to get a better place for them. If you know your house is available, please raise your hand because I'm still looking for the people. Ah, nobody's hand is up. And I realize, man of God, that we have a challenge that we need to prepare for. Because just as the Lord is bringing a harvest, I want you to have a picture of what God is going to be taking us into. There are many children in Enright Junction, they are just playing around. Where are your parents? They don't even know. We need orphanages. Are you following this? This prostitute, as they get saved, we need homes to rehabilitate them. 
we need to teach them new skills. Are you following this? Hmm. Because now they have to leave that trade and start doing something new. And in case you not realize, the people that God is, are going to use, they are seated here today. That's why the challenge of my spirit is to help us to prepare today. God is looking for men. And these men are everywhere. But when we think about ministry, many times all we're thinking about is holding the mic to preach. But God is looking for field soldiers now. Many will go into the places that people will not usually go to. And begin ministries that people do not usually think of. Is somebody still here? Hmm. Judges chapter 8, very quickly. When the Lord brought this word to us, just the way it's sounding to you, that's how it sounded to us. And we realize that what God is about is beyond us. But God has great faith that we can handle it. Amen? Judges chapter 8, and I'm going to start reading from verse 18. So that we don't read the whole thing for the sake of time. At this point in time, Gideon had defeated the Midianites. However, two of the kings of the Midianites were still remaining. And so they were in hot pursuit. By this time, Gideon had caught up with the two kings by name Ziba and Zalmunna. And so from verse 18, it tells us what went on after they were caught. So verse 18, Judges chapter 8, it says, Then said he unto Ziba and Zalmunna, What manner of men were they whom you slew at Tabor? And they answered, As thou art, so were they. Each one resembled the child of a king. Verse 19, And he said, they were my brethren, even the sons of my mother. As the Lord liveth, if ye had spared them alive, I would not slay you. Let's see verse 20. This is when it starts getting interesting. And he said unto Jetta, his firstborn, up and slay them. But the youth drew not his sword. For he did what? He feared. Because he was what? Yet a youth. Look at verse 22. So verse 21. In that sense, then Ziba and Zamuna said, Rise thou and fall upon us. For as the man is, so is his strength. And Gideon rose and slew Ziba and Zamuna and took away the ornaments that were on their camels' necks. Praise God. Jetha was the firstborn of Gideon. I think it was five years ago, to be exact now, when the Lord brought this word to us. And I considered it and I wondered, why would Gideon, at this point in time, having conquered these kings, and let me let you know this, that you see, in, in those days, when a king is conquered, it's usually a very shameful experience. By now, Ziba and Zamuna, I can assure you, their hands would have been tied. Are we following this? They probably would have been stripped naked. That's what Colossians 2 actually means when it says how God disarmed principalities and powers. You strip them naked. When King Saul found out that he was about to lose the battle, what did he say? Do you remember the story? He told his armor bearer to do what? To fall on him and kill him. Why? Because if the enemy catches you as a king is usually a very terrible experience. A very disgraceful experience because you'll be stripped naked and paraded for everybody to see. So right now, I can assure you that Ziba and Zamuna were in that state where they would have been stripped, tied, and in a state where they could do nothing but prepare for death. Are we following this? Then Gideon, recognizing that these men are helpless, called whom he assumed to be the one who could easily just finish these people up, his firstborn. And scripture records that this man was afraid. Now, if you read it 
the way the KJV puts it, you assume that, oh, he was a youth now. Ah, youths don't draw swords. I want you to see something. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 33. We'll read it together very quickly. I'll come back here. We're going somewhere. Please stay with me. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 33. It says, Then said Saul unto David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. For thou art what? David was what? Okay. But notice what it says about Goliath. And Goliath, he, a man of war, from when? From his youth. When did Goliath start fighting? From his youth. That means youths can actually draw swords. Are you following this? Hmm. So we recognize that Jetta's problem was beyond his age. Many of us are young men and women here. And I want you to recognize that you see, God is not concerned about your age. At this point in time, there was one basic issue with Jetta. Fear. Are you following this? And the Lord gave me this definition for the kind of fear Jetta was experiencing. Fear is that emotion that will invade you for every phase of your life you did not prepare for. I'll say that again. Fear is that emotion. Sometimes it will even be a spirit that will invade you for every phase of God's dealing in your life that you did not prepare for. And that's why the word in my spirit is prepare for more. Is somebody still here? When the Lord challenged us, a fear came into my spirit. Because for the first time it occurred to me, we are not ready. There's so much that we are craving for. We are beseeching the courts of God consistently. But brethren, if God were to break out the way we desire, my greatest worry is that many people will get saved but will not know what to do with them. Are following this? Because what is required is beyond the capacity of Pastor Kess, Pastor Efe. Are you following this? And many of the pastors in this land. What is before us requires men and women seated on the pews who need to wake up to their responsibilities. Are you following this? And so Gideon's decision was not because of a lack of capacity. But a recognition that this move of the spirit requires God reaching out to the next generation. Is somebody still here? Yes. Hmm. Pastor Kess alone can handle this. God needs men. So sometimes you will need to step aside and call on any one of you. Is somebody still here? Yes, because he will reckon you competent. That being my son, you should be able to handle this. But scripture says, Jetta feared. When I saw the scripture, I realized that we need to help the next generation to rise up. Amen? Because what God has for us in this city is beyond us. And then I read the scripture, I realized that the experience of Jetta is the experience of many people seated in the pews today and God wants you to recognize that this work that he is about upon the face of the earth now many of us are going to be stepping aside and we're going to be calling on the next generation you handle it for following this and guess what it doesn't mean that we will not be there it just means we're trying to show men the graces we have walked in so that they understand that how these things are possible. Not because of any capacity we have, but because God is doing the work. Is somebody still here? You see, every work that God's, God brings about is always a work of grace. You don't step into it because you are qualified. You step into it because God chooses to use you. Have you seen the scripture that says that God delights in the weak things of this world? The foolish things of this world? It says his intention is that at the end of the day, no man will be able to glory. Hmm. And so what God is about is going to be taking men who seem insignificant. Men who have told themselves that it is not people like me that God will use. 
and God is going to raise them up and use them to do mighty things in this land. If you are such a person, just lift your hand and say, God, here I am. Oh God, I hope you're understanding this. It's so important that you understand that God is looking beyond what we have, what we have done. Now all he's just looking for are people that will present themselves and say, Lord, I'm available. And so I realized that God's people need to prepare. And I'm just going to leave us very quickly with three things that the Lord has laid in my heart. That are very vital keys to preparing for what God wants to do. The first word he gave me for us. Despise not prophecies. Praise God. Despise not prophecies. When God begins to do a work, you will always notice that God begins to speak first. Somebody still here? Despise not prophecies. That scripture, I think, is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20. You'll find it there. And by prophecies, God speaks about inspired utterances. This generation does not understand prophecy. Because what we know as prophecy is one man standing holding the mic and telling you, I see five women with black wrapper and red blouse. They are holding their hands in your village and they say you must die this week. Are we getting this? And there's somebody shouting at the back, prophet, prophesy. Hmm? Like Reverend Kess told us recently, hmm? Papa, go deeper. It's sad that that is the only picture that men have of prophecy. But when scripture speaks about prophecy, you see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. For the sake of time, like I said, I'm just running through some of these things. It tells us what prophecy is about. It says they are inspired utterances designed to edify, designed to exhort, and what else? Comfort. In other words, they are words that come from the throne of heaven and they have an agenda. To build up, that's what the word edify means. To stir up, that's what the word exhort means. And to share up, that's what the word comfort means. It means that when the Lord begins to speak, his intention is to build his house. God's word is his method of doing things. Every revival always begins with God speaking. You see, the challenge we have in this land is that God has said so much. But we have not taken note of it. Despise not prophecies. You see, your generation must understand that many things that we stepped into, we entered by words that were spoken over our, our life. Is somebody still here? As a young man many years ago, I remember times of fellowship were not just times to just come and uh, service was hot. What did the Lord say? Very important. Because as you come to discover, when God wants to take a man to a new place, when God wants to bring about a new expression, he always begins by speaking. There are words that always go forth ahead of him. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 9, very quickly, let's just see this so that we can all be on the same page. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 9, it says, Behold, the former things have come to pass. And new things. And what does he say? New things do I what? Declare. Declare. It says before they do what? Before it even happens. I'll tell you of them. Despise not prophecies. Basic reason is everything that God is about, he always begins by speaking. Is somebody still here? He always begins by speaking. Let's do the next thing. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Why you must not despise prophecies. It's very vital that you key into this. As we're praying, you know what I was doing? I was hearing what God was saying. Everything Pastor Kerr said just registered in my spirit. Because you see, one thing you must understand about prayer is that prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. And what that means is that when you talk to God, he must talk back. Is somebody still here? And many times he will speak to us back by prophecy. 
and that word is vital. We're going to see why very shortly. We're just taking it bit by bit. But First Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Notice what it says. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given to you. How? Talk to me. How? By prophecy. And then in our ads, by the laying on of hands. Many times when God is speaking, we often assume that nothing is happening. But you see, many times gifts are activated without anybody even realizing it. You know why? Because his word has a way of stirring up the gifts within. The inspired utterances of God. It's so important that we understand that God is speaking. And what I recognize by that is that a move of the spirit is upon us. And we cannot help but take note of everything that the Lord is saying. The last reason, very quickly, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Timothy 1, 18. And this is the core thing that I want you to see. It's so important that we understand that when God speaks, there is an intention. That prophecies are designed to give us ammunition for war. Are you following this? It says, this charge I commit unto the Timothy according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, what do you do? Talk to me. Wage a good warfare. By the prophecies. Let me give us a few examples so that we understand why this is important. Many years ago, I read a book. Ah, what's this man's name now? But a popular evangelist of old. He's, he's late now. And he told the story of how he traveled to a particular city, a particular territory for a crusade. He said before then, he had been praying heavily and the Lord had spoken to him clearly about that land. He had received several words over time and he had just been waiting for when the Lord will open the door. So after doing the work for many years, he said one day he received a call from somebody in that city and they told him that they would desire that he come and have a crusade that they are greatly in need of him. And when he heard it, he was so excited. Finally, God has opened the door. So he got ready, got his bags, traveled, got to the city. And to his surprise, as he was driving around town, he didn't see billboards or signs or anything. Just the way we are preparing for Worry City Crusade. Are you following this? And we have the signs everywhere. He said he drew and saw nothing. So eventually when he met with his, the pastor that invited him, he said, ah, I noticed that no publicity has been done for this meeting. And the pastor said, yes. Where are we going to be having the crusade? He said, we don't have a hall yet. Are you following this? What and what do we need to put in place? He said, nothing has been made. No arrangement whatsoever. I said to him, so the evangelist was shocked and I asked, okay, so why did you tell me to come? And then he made the statement that no evangelist wants to hear. He says, I told you to come because you said God told you that you should come and do a crusade in this city. Is somebody still here? This evangelist said he went to his hotel room, locked the door, and said, Lord, I'm not leaving this room until you prove your word that you said. Day one, this man stayed and cried out to God. I want you to take note of this. Because many of us have entered into new realms like this. Day two, they kind of cry out earnestly. God, you said. The war of the prophecies are talking about. God, this was what you showed me. This was what you revealed. They said they did that for like five, six days. I'm not sure of. Then he heard a knock on his door. And he opened and a lady came in. And the lady said, For some days now I've been without rest. I'm a top ranking official in this city. And the Lord spoke to me. To come to so and so hotel. Come to so and so room knock on that door 
And anything that the man in the room tells me to do, I must do it. Somebody still here? Now, it just happened that in this city, they don't give permission for crusade. If it is not allowed, there is a ban against anything Christian. But this lady said, God said, anything you want, I should do. For the first time ever in the history of that city, they got a hall. They did publicity. Are you following this? Because of the strong influence of this woman. And they had a meeting that shook the very foundation of that city. Someone would say, wow, what a great man of God. No, what a great prophecy that went forth ahead. Is somebody still here? Hmm. I'm teaching my generation now to value the place of what God said. Because you see, what God said has the capacity to come to pass if you know how to war with it. Jesus told his disciples, I think I've shared this with us at some point. He says, let's go over to the other side. That was the word of the Lord. What happened midway? We know the story. And the Bible says there was a great storm. Some people are experiencing a storm right now. God will bring rest to you today. However, Jesus was sleeping. Very important we understand this. That many times when the word of God goes forth, God is fully convinced that it will happen. The only people who were panicking were the disciples of Jesus. At some point, we need to understand that if we will simply just stand and say, God, you said, that is all that is required to change the story. Somebody still here? Hmm. And there was a great calm. Luke chapter 1. I want us to see this very quickly. It's one of the scriptures that has greatly blessed us in recent times. And the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Let's see what happened from verse 57. Luke chapter 1 from verse 57. It says, Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors, verse 58 now, and her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her. And they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. Now I want you to see what warfare means sometimes. Verse 60. And his mother answered. And what did she say? Please give me KJV. Hmm? In my realm, God only speaks through King James. Hmm? Praise God. Hmm? I know Pastor Guess is new King James. This is the language of the Spirit. Learn it. When you get to heaven, this is how God is going to be speaking. And his mother answered and said. What did the mother say? Somebody shout aloud. But what will she be called? What would he be called, rather? John. He said there's a prophetic destiny for every person's life. Many of us grew up hearing things about ourselves that are not true. But you see, there is a word of prophecy over you that can come to pass if you learn to war with it. That which God has said can happen. I read this story, man of God, and I said to myself, Elizabeth could have kept quiet. After all, she's a woman. Let me not talk in this matter. If it's what God wants, let it happen. No. Sometimes you need to get radical. And tell your land that this land, not so. It will not happen. Just as we have prayed. That the cultists will begin to take positions of power again in this land. I begin to influence this land back to darkness that we are, we are, we are seriously delivering this land from. It will not happen. You know why? There is a prophetic word over the city. And there are men who are keen in and recognizing that we are in the day where God is bringing great things to pass. Is somebody still here? Hmm. God is doing great things. Do not be troubled by what you see. Set your heart on one thing. What is the Lord saying? John chapter 5 verse, 4, verse 19 very quickly. Let's see how we can make progress. I said three things. John 5 from verse 19. 
One man came and changed this world by this same principle. Our capacity to discern the mind of God and the words of God in this city is very important. He says, then answer Jesus. I said unto them, very, very, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the father do. Is somebody still here? For whatsoever things the father doeth, so the son do likewise. Please back up to verse 17. I want you to see how this started. In verse 17, Jesus began to speak. And he said, Jesus answered then, My father walketh hitherto. And what do I do? I work. I've come to realize that, you see, it is not so much of what you see. It's what is the Lord saying? If you had asked the average Israelite at this point in time, they'd tell you that God has forgiven us. God, sorry, God has forgotten us. He's not working again. One man came that, came that had a different perspective. And he announced to them, my father is working. And the things that you see is proof. Ah, praise God. I pray that before we end tonight, God will give you proof that he's working. And he stared the people. And then I told them, verse 19, go back to verse 19. You see, these things that you're seeing is what I see the Lord doing. It's what I recognize that God is bringing to pass. Just like every time I come here, I see the strong hand of God. Are you following this? Upon men seated in this place. And many times I'm amazed because with what I see, ah, no, 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 there's so much more that we can enter into. But men, we need to rise up because you see, what God was trying to do in Jetta was exactly what he did in his father. Gideon's rising was hinged on just one thing, a prophetic word. Thou mighty man of valor. Do you know that? Hmm. That was all that turns this man and Gideon that was given to fear. When I read it, I said that fear is generational from father to son. However, Gideon understood how to war. And that man rose up. Beloved, the father is working. Right now, he's working in your hearts. Right now, he's stirring up a new fire. Right now, he's bringing new perspective. Because some of you have forgotten where he started the journey with. And he needs to remind you today that my word is still hanging. God is looking for men that we war with prophecies. In verse 20, in our ads, and tells us, this is the part I like. For the father loves the son. And so what does he do? He shows him everything that he's doing. And notice what it says next. He will show me even greater. And the Lord will have you know to prepare for more. Because you are going to be hearing him speak more and more in the days to come. Your secret time will no longer just be a time to cry out. No, as you speak, God will respond. Your secret time will no longer be a time to travel. Yes, we want to see glory revealed in this land. And the words that God has been speaking to us, I know something is breaking out very strongly. The Father loves and is revealing. And a strong burden in my spirit to share with you. Don't despise prophecies. But God has been speaking, yes. Don't know what to do with them. War. As I chapter 62, for the sake of time, the Lord says that for Zion's sake, I will not rest. God says, I will not hold my peace. Because there's a glory that's about to be revealed. Then he says, ye watchmen. Oh, I wish we could see this. It's very important, please. Hmm? I don't mind if this, out of the three, if this is all we can look at. As out of the 62, from verse 3. Jump now. It says, thou shalt be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a rag diadem in the hand of thy God. Verse 4. Thou shalt no more be tempted forsaken. Neither shall the land any more be termed desolate. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And our land shall be called Hephzibah because and, and the land Beulah. For the Lord delights in our land. And our land shall be married. Next verse. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as a bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so our God shall rejoice over thee. Praise God. Next verse. I have set watchmen. I have no doubt that if there are watchmen in this city, they are seated here today. I have no doubt. I'm convinced in my spirit that God has raised Arosi and Worry for a time as this. This city is ripe for a great harvest. And there are watchmen here today. The Lord says, I've set watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem. We shall never hold their peace day nor night. He says, ye that make mention of the Lord. What did he say? Keep not silent. 
Next verse. And give him no rest till he do what? Establish. Until he make his prophetic word over our city come to pass. Jerusalem, he prays upon the earth. Give him no rest, he says. Beloved, despise no prophecies. There are words that are hanging that God wants to bring to pass. And all is waiting for his men that will go back to say, God, you said. God, you said. God, you said. Tonight, the Lord will reveal his glory here. Because he said. Second thing, to prepare. We must renounce hypocrisy. Hear this very strongly. There is a generation of men that are rising up that are outwardly fervent but inwardly defeated. That must not be mentioned amongst you in this house. Renounce hypocrisy. You know what hypocrisy is? A hypocrite is a liar. That's what the word actually means in the Greek. He's a stage actor. He just comes and acts and then goes back. He enjoys church. On Sunday, he is fervent and on fire. But on Monday, he's addicted to porn. Are you following this? On Tuesday, he's masturbating. On Wednesday, he's sleeping with his girlfriend. On Thursday, he's cheating on his girlfriend. I don't know if I'm getting this. Why generation of people who have learned how to act like Christians. But we're not Christians. How do I know this? We're talking about Jetta. Don't forget. That's where we started. The Bible said of Jetta that he drew not his sword. Beloved, if you understand Jewish history, you understand how that is strange. Are following this? Because from a very early age, every young man, they begin to train them from war, even up to this present day. Even if that's not the case, some of us grew, on, grew up with parents that had guns. Hmm? My, my, uh, if you've ever, as we're growing up then, you, you figure your, your father had a gun. And from time to time, my dad will come and shoot that gun. And the whole area will shake. You know why he's doing that? So that everybody will know. Don't come here to steal. We are armed and dangerous. And when he does that, ah, as a young child, I'll be fascinated. I will check where he keeps the gun. Are you following this? When nobody is looking, pick up the gun and pose like my father. Are you following this? One day as I held the gun, something I broke. Hey! Beloved, every child wants to imitate the father. Are you following this? Gideon expected that Jetta, you must have been drawing swords in secret. Ah, oh, I'm trying to explain hypocrisy to us here. You must have been in the secret place giving yourself to these things so that when the time of showing forth comes, you'll be ready. The day of Jetta's showing forth came and it was exposed that his secret life was zero. The key to a powerful public ministry is a powerful private ministry. You don't draw swords or learn warfare when you come to battle. It's in the secret place. And the Lord is saying to us, there are hypocritical activities that we need to renounce today. Because while we assume that brethren are praying, I've been amazed to see that this is where many young people's minds are. Man of God, this generation needs break, a, a breaking forth of God's delivering hand from their phones. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. In the secret place where we should be drawing swords. Symbol of the sword of the spirit. Getting ourselves deepened into the things of God. I've realized that there are things that have taken the hearts of God's people. And in the secret place, we are not where we should be. Is somebody still here? I know I'm talking to somebody in the house today. In the secret place, we are not drawing swords. In the secret place, we are giving ourselves to things that we should not. And when it's time to come into the public, there is a fear that invades us. You know why? We do not prepare. 
Is somebody still here? Mm. There are lifestyles we need to renounce because they are not consistent with your character as a believer. There are certain places we don't go to anymore. There are certain things we should not even be saying. How can Big Brother Nigeria start and Christians are rejoicing finally? Is somebody still here? Because the place of drawing swords are lost. Now what we have are hypocrites. Who when the Lord is calling to the secret place, they will rather be occupied with things that the Lord did not command for. I'm trying to make us see why we need to prepare. Because you see, this race that God is calling us to run is going to call us to a deeper place of consecration. God needs men that will not be actors. Men that will be real. Very quickly, three basic keys. And maybe we might end with this. Three basic characteristics of the hypocrite. Ah, my time is up. Do I still have time, man of God? Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hmm? Let's just see how we can round up. Number one, the hypocrite, his heart is far from God. Tonight, as we begin to pray very strongly, the Lord is going to capture hearts again. I trust God for that. In Mark chapter 7, verse 6, we see this documented. And Jesus reckoned and said that there is a problem. There are men that are trying to reach me with their lips, but their hearts are far. Other things have captured their hearts. And so we must understand where the problem is. God is looking for hearts. We need to give him our hearts. I've said that the challenge of the hypocrite is that the hypocrite is trying to live a perfect life with an imperfect heart. Second Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9 says that God is looking to and fro. What is his desire? For men whose hearts are perfect. The word perfect then means hearts that are committed, totally given. What makes hypocrisy thrive? What makes it seem like it is getting the upper hand is that the hearts of many Christians have not been fully captured by God. If we want to win this race, if we want to win this battle for our city, we will have to understand that we must come to that place of complete consecration. Our hearts need to be given to the Lord again. For the sake of time, I'll just give us the last key that the Lord says we need to in our preparation. We said, do not despise prophecies. What's the second key? Renounce hypocrisy. And lastly, guard your hearts against rebellion. Guard your hearts against rebellion. And I'll just tell a story as we round up with this. I gave this illustration once. A man was kidnapped, put in a vehicle, locked in the boot of his vehicle, and he's in there, crying out as he's driving, hoping somebody will hear. The kidnappers drive his car and get to a checkpoint, and the man is happy. Are you following this? In his mind, I found those that will rescue me. Is somebody still here? The kidnappers bring out a thousand naira notes. The policeman is jumping. Are you following this? And calling the kidnapper names. Hmm? Honorable, sir, chief. Collects the money. The man is in the booth crying, hoping that finally I've seen my redemption. The man is too excited with the one thousand naira notes. To understand what is happening. He's hearing shouts. But he's too disturbed by what is in his hand. And the kidnapper drives off. Are you following this? You know what we'll say? Ah, Nigerian police. Is it not true? Hmm. What? Kai? How did we get to this place? Beloved. I realize that that is exactly the same state we are. The people that could have helped. You know what the trouble was? They were too occupied with their needs being met. That money was all it was. Now, let me let you know. 
every policeman is equipped armed especially those who are actually sent to be on patrol so they have all the gadgets and everything required to deal with any situation those men were just the answer I'm trying to make you see how the spirit of rebellion works. In first Samuel, for the sake of time, we'll be able to see it. It tells us that that's actually how the spirit of witchcraft operates. When the people start rebelling against their assignment and now start pursuing things that are not relevant, that policeman will we curse him with all the things in our hearts. But the reality is that that's just how we are. A spirit of rebellion has distracted this generation. In case you do not know, where the answer? Just the way that policeman was, answer. The cries of the prostitutes are coming out. Where the answer? The cries of the drunkards. They see the believer and in their hearts, finally. And they are crying. You know what we are not hearing? Hmm. A love for money. A love for comfort. We seem to have forgotten what our original assignment was designed to be. What we were actually called out for. And because we've gotten carried away, and just like I said, we have gotten so used to doing church and we've forgotten to do Jesus. And the Lord laid these three things in my heart, and it's been the driving force for me to understand that God is speaking. To understand that God needs our hearts. We must renounce hypocrisy. And to understand that there is a spirit of rebellion at work in the land. And I must not be caught by it. I need to consecrate my heart back to that which God reckons as my assignment. The cries of the prostitutes. The cries of the men who are lost. They are getting louder and louder. And if you understand your place and you are understanding the place of consecration that the Lord has been calling us to, you realize that this is not the time to begin to joke around. This is the time to prepare for that which God is about. Let's bow our heads. I don't need to give you a prayer point. talk to him thank you Jesus talk to him abasatasis malebro bosatun en nam rakasire asis e krono shatu zifredo satal la brekedesis e zefreno shatal la bradokere de korasis ngene jeto shekede dere de der vubra basutes oh spirit of god thank you thank you Thank you. Thank you. Ask the Lord now. There's a place of repentance that some of us need to get to now for what God is going to do next. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's a boldness that the Lord is restoring to his house. It's a boldness of faith. And so, Father God, I thank you. As you begin to move now, hear the cries of your people. It's not a time to be quiet, I beg of you. There's a time to complete your consecration. Some of us started well, but we've been distracted. I'm talking to somebody now. The Lord is calling you back. Don't get lost in the midst of this fire. Key into it. It's very important. Because from time to time, the Lord is going to beckon on you to do that which he has called you to do and so you must be ready is there a warfare that needs to go on tonight oh yes please go ahead now because as we came in here I sense that there are people that have been trusting God for a healing gift and God is staring that up right now because a healing revival is hitting the city and everywhere I go I sense it that there are men and women that the Lord is staring. Marcia. And I speak this by prophecy. 
Engadala ba losete se se fredosh. Ah, see, someone needs to ask that the Lord will show him glory. Show him glory. There's somebody here. Maybe after the meeting, I will not want to call you out. I, I see the lewd and unclean things you have been beholding. God wants to give you a different picture. Tonight, you will leave this place with a hunger for glory. That taste for Paul will leave you. It will leave you. Oh, just cry out and ask that the Lord will reveal, show you. Ah, there's a weight of glory. That God wants to open up in this house. Oh, just stare yourself now. Stare yourself now. I see I have like five minutes and I'll be done. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It should not be, but it happens. There are people here, they have been battling with the spirit of fear. I'm deliberately not laying hands, but I'm addressing issues. Because I know that in your cry to the Lord in this meeting, God has assured me he will hear you and he will respond. He will respond. He will respond. There, there, there is a fear that has plagued you. It is, this one is not normal. This is a spirit has tormented you terribly. A hellish fear. Oh, but I just sense the Lord just shifted it. I, I, I sense the Lord that there's just a shift that is taking place. If you just cry out to the Lord now. The psalmist said, I sought the Lord and it delivered me from all my fears. Oh God, let the spirit of boldness invade this house now. Let men begin to receive new fire to confront their fears. Because I hear the Lord say to you, the things you are afraid are afraid of you. Somebody's going to receive boldness to step out this week. That thing that God has been saying to do, it's time, it's time. You've been asking God when, when, when. God sent me to tell you today, it's time. Is your fear that has been limiting you? It's time to step out. God assured me that I was going to judge witchcraft in this meeting today. There are certain rebellious tendencies that are going to end. You're not going to go back home with it. You're not going to go back home with it. It ends now. It ends now. Even as we began to pray earlier, I sense God working in this house. Because the vessels that God wants to use, there must be no trace of rebellion in you. You cannot confront things in the lives of the sinner when you yourself are struggling with those same things. And so God is judging rebellion. A spirit of witchcraft is leaving you. Right now, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Oh God, in the Marobaris. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, I'm out of time. God, I pray a blessing over this house. In the days to come, bring about a strong revelation of your glory. Let men and women rise up to take the place that you've called them into. I see men stepping into new offices. I see people coming into a new place of leadership in this house. I see a restructuring taking place. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I know that God is set to do a great work in this place. And my counsel is that stay ready. Stay ready. Get back to your secret place. Get back to being with God. A day of showing forth is upon this house. An expansion is set to take place. And God is bringing this house to a place of prominence. God is preparing you for more. And it will not be long. And every man must take his place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Can you rise on your feet quickly? Rise on your feet. I know we have over a shorter time. We'll soon be going. We'll soon leave. I saw Pastor if he do two things. 
I sent a message to MD that this meeting was going to be a worship and prayer meeting. I didn't expect that we we're going to teach. But my brother now told me he would be here just to visit us. And I said to him, you can't come and not release a word. So I thought I would just lead prayers because as I brooded upon the meeting, prayed and engaged God, I saw him do two things. I saw him prophesy. I saw that he was prophesying, he was prophesying. So what I received in my spirit was when I finished leading prayers, I'll give him the microphone, then he will begin to prophesy. That's what I saw. But I also saw that he was laying hands on people. That's why I told him to stay. So if you are late, you have to take a vehicle to run home, you are released. But there are certain people I saw him lay hands on, broken people. Broken people. People who had been badly wounded by a, a life of hypocrisy. He's, as he began to teach, I now understood what God was doing. So if you know that your life is battered, it is bruised, there's a part of your life you cannot share with anybody and your life has taken a downward turn and your spiritual life is now dead and you need the hand of God inside, outside, if you're online connect with us if you're online come to the altar now pastor if he needs to pray for you I saw that, I saw that he needs to lay hands so I was even surprised that when Anna was leading prayers, she was beginning to speak about cracks. The Lord wants to heal cracks. What I see in my spirit is 15 people. 15. That's the number I see. Wherever you are, come now. We don't have time. Come. Oh, no more shame. No more limitation. I can now see Jesus. Face to face, no more shame, no more limitation. I can now see Jesus face to face. No more shame, no more limitations. I can now see Jesus face to face. No more shame, no more shame, no more limitation. I can now see Jesus face to face. No more change. No more change. No more limitations. I can now see Jesus There's a lady I see outside. Come, 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 come. No more change. There's a lady outside. No more limitations. Don't struggle. I can now see Jesus face to face. Face to face. No, 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 no. Face to face, I can now see Jesus. Face to face, face to face, face to face, to face. If you are in the congregation, can you pray in the spirit? Pray in the spirit, 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 I know we are out of time, just give us five more minutes, I know we are out of time, I can now see Jesus, cracks, 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 I can now see Seat. If you've been prayed for, no more, no more, no more limitations. I can now see Jesus face to face. No more pain, no more limitations. I can now see Jesus face to 
paid. The price has been paid. The blood has been paid for me. I can now see Jesus face to face. The price has been paid. The blood has been paid for me. I can now see Jesus face to face. The price has been paid.
give. Just thank him tonight. Thank him tonight. Thank him tonight. Thank him. 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 Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your servant. Replenish him. Fill him. Bless his life, his wife, his children, their ministry. Lord, your words will never be lacking in his mouth. Thank you for giving us such a functionary in our city. Keep him on the mountain tops where the cold waters from your presence continually water his spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.